Hey YouTubers, it's Charlie. Thank you everybody that left me questions on my North Remembers storyline video. Lots of questions about characters interacting, like old characters that have been separated, meeting back up. I definitely think there are some Stark characters that might run into each other again, but I don't think a lot of that's gonna happen until like the very, very end. I think people are gonna remain relatively separated. George R. R. Martin actually said this really interesting thing a couple years ago where he was like, you know, when the story starts, you have all these characters that are in really close proximity, like, like the Stark children and then they scatter to the four winds, and then at a certain point as the story reaches its climax and you start moving towards the finale, all these storylines start to converge on each other by the final act of the play, you know, however you want to think about it. Obviously that's a long ways off because we have at least like eight seasons, but just careful for spoilers as we get into questions if you haven't caught up on season five. First question, here we go, Corey asks, a few families would be good, but if they overdo it, they run the real risk of either skimming over too many characters or getting bogged down in explanations. Yeah, the internet definitely hates exposition. What they'll probably end up doing is bringing on one or two new Northern Lords and then just using the existing ones they've already established on the show. That means at least Starks, Boltons, Car Starks, and Umbers. I do hope we see the Manderleys at some point, but I think at the very least we'll at least get some more Umbers. Some new Umbers that we haven't seen before like Small John. As much as people get upset about them cutting stuff out of the books, I think there'd be more rage if they did a book storyline, but it ended up being terrible because they tried to do too much. Like if they tried to cram the Aegon storyline in season 6, they'd have less time to spend in King's Landing with what's going on with Cersei, less time to spend in the North with the North Remembers storyline, less time with Arya in the East. I'm actually really interested to see, I know they're doing a spin-off TV series, but I'm interested to see if they try to do like a comic spin-off like they did with Buffy, like they did Buffy season 9 in the comics where they just, they continued storylines that they didn't have time for on the TV show. Would you guys actually read a Game of Thrones comic book that's just based on stuff that happens on the show that they had to cut out of the books? Next question, Apollo asks, I really want the show to catch up with Bran Stark from the books and seeing Rick and Stark emerge as a military genius like his brother Rob would be interesting. Well, I mean, I don't know if I'd call Rob a military genius. He was definitely really good. He had some big victories, but Rickon is so young that he's kind of like a sweet Robin character where it's like, we hope he turns into something eventually. But right now, I mean, it's just going to take at least like six or seven years before he gets to Joffrey's age where he can actually sit and make decisions. Remember when Maester Lewin was helping Bran make decisions at Winterfell because Bran had to deal with the business of the North while Rob was off fighting his war? Rickon taking power would be kind of like that. Next question, Chad asks, I'd like to see the Cranog men decide to deal with the phrase and the Mountain Clans gather up to go deal with the Boltons. Well, just talking about the Cranog men, they'd actually be the closest to deal with the phrase because the twins are like right down there. I definitely think we'll see evil turn on itself. Walder Frey, not a good person, very paranoid, very quick to switch allegiances. The implication back in season three was that all it took for him to help the Lannisters out was the slight that Rob dealt them when he married Talisa over Walder Frey's daughter. So I don't think it'd be too hard for Littlefinger to find a way to stir up some trouble between the Freys and the Lannisters and the Boltons. He's already playing the Lannisters against the Boltons right now, maybe even eventually with some help from the Tyrells too, because he's been wheeling and dealing with the Queen of Thorns since before the Purple Wedding. Next question, Aiden asks, What are the spiders the White Walkers are depicted riding? Those are just ice spiders. They supposedly came out of the Long Night. We, we don't know where they came from or how they rose. They're just like another species that the White Walkers have co-opted. They could be creatures that the White Walkers twisted with their magic, or they could have already just naturally grown that way. They could be a race of ice spiders that just naturally evolved in the far north. The horses that they're riding are normal horses that died and then they raised as whites. Next question, Jabez asks, I want to see Brienne versus Ramsay. I want to watch Brienne punch Ramsay in the dick and then beat his head in with a rock like she did to Clegane. Well, I, I don't know about Brienne crossing paths with Ramsay. She is in the north right now, relatively close to Winterfell. I'm hoping that she stays there, but she could go further south, just because I'm hoping her storyline does more stuff from her book story. Like, they, they've diverged from her book story quite a bit in season five. It does seem like season six is doing a lot of book things that they've skipped over in the past. Ironborn is like the best example of that. So we might see some Brienne Gravedigger action. If you don't know what the Gravedigger theory is, I'll add a link in the description. I've already done a video about that but I'm not expecting Brienne to cross paths with Ramsay. It's totally possible though, it's really hard to tell what they're gonna change from the books. Next question, Aditya asks, if Bran has acquired Greensight, does he know everything that's going on with Arya, Jon, and Sansa? And can he see into the future? Well, the thing about Greensight is, is that there are some limitations. He can really only see in and around weirwood trees. So unless something happened near a weirwood tree, he's probably not gonna know about it. That becomes really problematic when you're talking about the far south where not as many weirwood trees grow. Way, way back in the ancient history of Westeros, weirwood trees grew all over the place, but a lot of them were cut down by the First Men, then the Andals, and now like, for instance, Stannis, there was a weirwood tree inside Dragonstone. Stannis cut it down and Melisandre burned it. 
So anywhere there's a weirwood tree, Bran can see what that weirwood tree, like, like the face on it, has seen. So yes, Bran can see things, but only things that are in proximity to weirwoods. And because the Weirwoods haven't seen the future, no, I, I don't think that he's going to be seeing through the future. Most of what he sees will be the past. That's what people mean when they talk about Weirwood flashbacks. It's just another storytelling device that the show might end up using at a certain point. The Cersei flashback was a little bit different in that it was a POV flashback. It was Cersei remembering something. Next question, Rory asks, On the show, how is Littlefinger able to be offered the title Warden of the North when he doesn't possess land in the North? Well, regardless of what protocol dictates, I think he's able to extract anything that he can get out of Cersei. Like, Cersei's willing to give up anything to get what she wants. Under normal circumstances, if he wanted to become Warden of the North, he would probably try to acquire that title via marriage. But I think in the context of the show, what would happen is, is that Sansa would take the title Wardeness of the North, he would marry her to Sweet Robin so that he would gain control over both those lands because he'd have influence over Sweet Robin because he's kind of a weak willed person and he has influence with Sansa. Although given what she's endured in season five, I don't know how friendly she's going to be when she sees Littlefinger again. She might hate the shit out of him right now for making her marry Ramsay. Next question, Bogdan asks, If the North has so many houses, how is it possible that Robb Stark only raised an army of 18,000 men and reached like 50 or 60,000 Lannisters and about 40,000 after Sir Jaime was defeated? I never understood how Robb had such a small army. R.I.P. Well, the problem with the North is, is that, like, just in terms of geographical area, it's the biggest, but its population is the lowest. Like, a lot more people live further south, so there's just more people to be had from the lords in the south. You also have to consider that of the, the great houses in the North, you know, whenever Robb Stark tries to raise an army, he goes around and he asks for men, some of the lords are more loyal than others, so some are more willing to give of their resources. But really, it just gets down to total population. Like, the total population of the North dramatically lower than some of the places in the South that are geographically smaller. Thank you everybody for submitting questions. We're getting closer to that Dunkin' Egg book coming out, and I'm talking to like a couple other sponsor people about beefing up some of my giveaways. So if that ends up happening, I'll let you guys know, because it'll just mean I'm able to give more swag away. Congratulations to the winner of this week's giveaway, Harry Johnson, you win a $20 Amazon gift card. Be sure to private message me on the back end of my channel so I can get your contact info. There's a bunch of other stuff happening this week, so be sure to check my Facebook and Twitter for updates on when videos are posting. I'll have links for that stuff in the description. But we have like Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is starting, Gotham is already back, Heroes is here, there's a Walking Dead finale, just a whole bunch of awesome stuff going on. And everything is actually pretty good so far. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., for instance, supposed to be like a whole different show now. Almost like the season 3 premiere tomorrow will be a completely new pilot. Like the show's not going to look anything like it did in season 1 and 2. So while you guys wait for all that stuff to post, you can click here to learn all about the Grave Digger Theory if you don't know anything about that. And you can click here to catch up on Gotham before tonight. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Let's high five. I'll see you guys tonight.